Mr. Speaker, I ask unanimous consent that the Committee on Foreign Affairs be discharged from further consideration of House Resolution 1169 and ask for its immediate consideration in the House. Resolution reaffirming the commitment of the United States to promote free, fair, transparent, and credible elections in Bangladesh. Is there objection to the consideration of the resolution? Without objection, the resolution is agreed to and the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. The chair recognizes the gentlewoman from Florida. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield myself such time as I may consume. The gentlewoman is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Indo-Asia Pacific region is of critical importance to the United States. It is home to some of our most urgent security challenges, our closest people-to-people -people links, and our strongest commercial and economic ties. The administration has recognized this priority in both the National Security Strategy document and the subsequent free and open Indo-Pacific strategy. Unfortunately, there are also many challenges to human rights, non-proliferation, and democratic values in the Indo-Pacific. For that reason, this bill bolsters, bolsters the critical work of the State Department and USAID to promote democracy, strong civil society, and the rule of law. Mr. Speaker, I am so pleased that we're taking up this bill, which earned unanimous bipartisan support, demonstrates the strong, continuing commitment of the United States to Asia. It reaffirms American values, strengthens American commitments to our many partners and allies in the region, and makes clear our enduring pursuit of peace and mutual prosperity. Mr. Speaker, thank you, sir. The United States must continue to reassure the nations of the Asia Pacific region of the enduring commitment of the United States to being a peaceful presence in the region dedicated to universal values and mutual prosperity that advances American national security interests, prosperity, and promotes the values of freedom and human rights. I urge my colleagues to join me in support of this measure. Speaker, uh, I rise in support of this measure and I yield myself an extremely important and timely piece of legislation. I'm glad that we will be able to bring it forward today in a bipartisan manner, directing Congress's attention to this vital foreign policy. The bill states that the United States advances American influence, including through the promotion of human rights, supports the rule of law, and international norms. This bill sends a clear and resounding message to the region. American commit commitment remains steadfast. I strongly support this measure, and I urge all members to do the same. The gentleman from Texas is recognized. Thank you so much. As we approve, it's also very important that we provide reassurance to Americans that our values are not being abandoned. In today's important House Amendment, we commit not only to support continued engagement and friendship in the Asia-Pacific region, but to advance through our trade negotiations the values for which America has long been recognized as a beacon of hope to the world. That is a beacon that should leave no corner of this globe, including Asia, un in the dark. And it must include human rights as a universal concept for all the people of the world. Our economic relations must be rooted in our shared values, our respect for human rights and adherence to the rule of law. Congress rejects support for just any trade agreement and indicates its support for those agreements with partners that actually respect, promote, and adhere to the rule of law. A surge of extrajudicial killings of citizens by police and gunmen. The shocking human rights abuses is not all. Child labor is persistent and serious. Safety is not prioritized as indicated to workers that were killed in a garment factory fire. These anti-worker policies mean that it's a low-wage country that markets itself to American companies looking to further outsource American jobs. I believe that human rights is not a luxury. 
It is central to American values. It is central to the security of every American family. Amending this bill today helps us to achieve that objective and to send a strong message to the administration. I thank the gentleman and I yield back. Mr. Uh, Speaker, I'm now free to yield a minute and a half to the gentleman from Florida, member of the committee, Mr. Soto. The gentleman from Florida is recognized for a minute and a half. I thank the gentleman from Minnesota and the chairman from Texas. It's been a long road, but it looks like we're bringing it in for a landing. And America is thankful, Bill, that we could all be proud of. That includes Central Florida. And I thank everybody on the committee for their good work, and I yield back. The gentleman yields back, though I want to again express my same uh, strong support for the bill before us today. It is an important piece of legislation. It articulates a bipartisan policy towards the Indo-Pacific, highlights the importance of coordinating our development, diplomacy, and security interests to create effective foreign policy, and it sends a message to Asia and the world that the United States is investing in our allies and our strategic priorities. I hope all members will join me in supporting this bill before I yield. As amended, those in favor say aye. Those opposed, no. In opinion of the chair, two-thirds being in the affirmative, the rules are suspended. The bill is passed. And without objection, the motion reconsiders laid on the table.